Welcome to the Law Unscripted, where we discuss everything about the law and the legal system that you never knew. Never understood. And no one ever told you. This week, we are covering, we are back to part three, third and final part about civil versus criminal law. What is the difference? And we're using the fabulous and famous examples of O.J. Simpson, and we've brought in Rodney King. So this week, we are going to put it all together, finish Rodney King, tie it in with O.J. Simpson, and conclude the year, start fresh in a new year. I'm Virginia Tarani. I'm Chelsea Rogers. And this is brought to you by Tarani Law LLC, because you never need a lawyer till you do. All right, everybody, let's get started. So hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Um, Everybody ate lots of things, had a good time with family, and that you had a wonderful holiday. Be safe traveling back as you go through your vacations. And this one, we'll see us again in the new year. Yeah, I think the the first Tuesday of the new year. (laughs) first Tuesday. So we're not taking a break. We may go a little shorter this time to to get us through, but we wanted to make sure that you had something enjoyable for uh, traveling in time before the new year. So we're going to get started. We have been, it truly has been our topic um, for the last three weeks. And you would have thought from our very first one that we weren't actually going to have that much to say about what is the difference between civil and criminal law. I think we've had a lot to say. (laughs) Well, we have, and even I've surprised myself. I'm an attorney and I've been practicing for 17 years and I'm looking at this going, it's just civil versus criminal law. That's it. But it sounds simple, but there are so many small parts of it that I'm not afraid to ask the dumb questions because nobody ever tells you this stuff. Right, but they're not dumb. And that's the thing is nobody does. You hear things on the news, you see it, and you're like, what in the world? But who do you go talk to? Like, exactly. do you have your friend who's an attorney and you call up on, on your ride to work? And you're like, what does this mean? But I think it's super common that there will be some, you know, headlining story. And it's really difficult to understand why the outcome was what the outcome was. Yeah. Um, Either with sentencing or sort of what evidence was admitted or not. And a lot of that has to do with these differences. Yeah. And then last week we pulled in what I think is a fascinating topic. Um, But that it, it was super confusing to me was sort of when are the feds allowed to come in yeah. and sort of prosecute things? Hello. And for those of you listening and watching, we have our dog friends back. Um, Chelsea has Olive. Olive is still not here with us. He's taking another break from the week, but Extended hopefully in the vacation. new year. Um, his vacation will be over and he will be back with us. But we do have um, Charlie. Watch out for him. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> who's the, the very feisty golden cocker spaniel sitting with Chelsea. He's my baby boy. And then if you can see her, we've got um, Willow, who's a merle colored cocker spaniel. Um, she is a very sleepy girl and will probably remain on that one side of the couch the entire time. For those of you who can see it, it seems a little ridiculous, but we have pink blankets set out on our couch because I call them dog magnets. They're or so soft. Dog traps. Yes. And the dogs think so too. Um, so when I lay them out, we have dogs. And I thought it would be a nice thing to pull them out and have dogs for our videos, but they may be a little bit distracting for our video viewers. So for good or for ill, we have dogs and we love them. Um, Charlie Willow and Sky will wander around. We do have Sky. She's our little silk, silky terrier who sweater. She loved her Christmas sweater so much um, that we have put her back in her Christmas sweater because we wanted her to dress up um, for our last program Mm -hmm. for the new year. So when she wanders in and hopefully wanders in and sits on the couches and says, hello, Charlie, Charlie. you got to sit down. Um, Then... (laughs) Sorry, I'm talking little no. dog mom voice coming no. out, telling my, my boy to sit. Um, Sky will wander through, and we are totally not talking about legal stuff. But it's okay, because it's the end of the year. And most people, many people are still on vacation, yeah. so whatever. It's we are good. just happy that you're joining us. Yes. Um, so like, comment, subscribe. If you have questions about what we covered today, or maybe something we didn't cover today, yeah. we would love to hear your suggestions or what legal topics you might want some more um, <laughs> details on. And thank you for joining us again. We're happy to be here. Yeah. And we are still, we are loving your comments. We're loving your input. Thrilled that you're joining us. Um, we're very excited for the responses that we're getting and hopefully that we're responding to a lot of what you're asking and saying 
And truly, we've got so many topics that are out there that we've thought of. But if you think of one, we're happy to discuss that too. Okay. So off and running. Yes. We're going to do a quick recap of where we come from, what we're trying to do, um, where we're headed, and how we're going to wrap things up today. So part one, truly, we didn't think it was part one. We thought it was a one-off of... For starting the law unscripted, we think we're going to go back to the basics of what in the world is the difference between civil and criminal law, because who knows? It should be basic, right? <laughs> yeah, and it should be. And I was like, oh, yeah, just the hour. So we we got a lot in the hour. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we hit the, the biggest differences, um, technically speaking. Yes. So if you don't know and you're catching us for the first time, do go back to the first episode if you're interested. It's not just legal jargon. We try to break it down and hopefully you're somewhat entertaining while we do. Um, (laughs) I don't know. Chelsea might disagree. I think we're hysterical. We entertain ourselves. So there's that. That's true. We'll crack up at ourselves. If not (laughs) anybody else joining, we're doing a podcast just because we entertain ourselves, (laughs) but for real. (laughs) And it's going to be the new year. Um, so for the first one we did, we really did. We're like, okay, well, what's the best way to do Mm -hmm. a recap of, how, what is the difference between the criminal and the civil law? And the best example that we have is the O.G. Simpson case, yeah. um, the the murder trial where his ex-wife had died um, and one of her friends. And then what happened is while we were working through that, mm-hmm. we realized we're like, oh, wow, well, this is at the same time and in, in response to the Rodney King case. Yes. So. We realized it. Some viewers realized it. Listeners mm-hmm. realized it. Made a comment. We're like, yeah, we really need to go back to that. So what we have done is part two, and I'm just trying to figure out the microphone myself here. We're we're working through all of the different mm-hmm. videos and microphones to so work with us while we do to figure out the best way to, to make this happen. But going back, so video two, we decided there really is something more to OJ and there really is something more to go back to for civil criminal where we really have the beginning of Mm -hmm. it, of this clear distinction and help of discussing with Rodney King. Yes. And Rodney King, for those of you who don't know or are listening in again for the first time is he was a, a trial where he had been caught or alleged probable cause to believe that he was drinking and driving Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately ended up being brutalized by four police officers of the LAPD. And his trial wasn't him. So OJ was a trial against him, but Rodney King was a trial against the four officers Mm -hmm. who had done the beating. And his ended up being three, three full set cases. That's how I'll say it. Cases for trials. Yes. Um, and Chelsea's still in pins and needles as to how there's this fourth I'm trial. Truly, truly confused. <laughs> so we've touched in our last episode, episode two, we touched both of the criminal trials. For Rodney King, yes. Yes. So the police officers were tried by the local jurisdiction, yeah. were acquitted. Um, yes. You can see my true reaction to that. Um, in the last, <laughs> in the last episode. Chat, and, and it's, this is good because it's a real time experience yeah. where Chelsea is younger than me and truly didn't grow up with it. She didn't, she was hardly there for OJ. I think maybe a year or two old, if that. Yeah. Um, so she was hardly there for OJ and then Ryan and King were taking it back even farther. So mm-hmm. it was not a part of your lifetime at all. No, except not at in all. the peripheral now. It, sort of in the peripheral and- I think a lot of sort of everything we've been talking about um, on this podcast is that even like with OJ, with Rodney King, I'm sort of aware generally, but it's the specifics that truly just, you got my my real reaction to some of the details. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is something that I'm sure other people can relate to. Um, and I, th- I think they have been. Yes. I think they their responses have been the same, a lot of them the same as yours, is how is this happening? Um, how did it? And with Rodney King and for OJ, um, teaser toward the end of this mm-hmm. or toward try, trying to pull it back in, is both were African American men mm-hmm. and both were in LA. Right. Um, so this is this is where we get the shock and the awe. Where with Rodney King, it was oh my gosh, there's this huge terrible beating mm-hmm. by police officers. Yes, on of video. a black man. On, on video. video. Yes. Caught on video, mm-hmm. um, given, not even leaked, given to the news, mm-hmm. the local news, so it could be published, um, or, or 
whatever. Distributed. <laughs> distributed. Thank you. Not published like a book, but yeah. distributed, um, which it was. And so the four officers were then charged um, mm-hmm. basically with assault with deadly force. Yeah. And they were acquitted of that. The The idea that the best that people can come up with is that the the conspiracy part of it, which is not necessarily untrue, and there's been right. a lot of background. And I don't want to focus too much on the racial part for this is not a show about social justice. This is a legal show. Right. Um, it's just hard to detach in these, it, really. It is, and that's exactly the issue, is in the law, it is hard to detach. And especially with these cases, mm-hmm. we're trying to focus on civil versus criminal law. But in the end, there's a lot of civil rights law. Mm-hmm. And that was the second trial. So exactly. when they were acquitted of the first trial for the standard state charges, mm-hmm. they then got picked up by the feds. Hey, there's this huge outcry of this cannot be right. This is wrong. Right. They need to be convicted. They need to be charged at least with something yes. tried again. So the way that they found it was to go federal. Which is pretty smart. I mean, it's a, it's it a smart move. Um, that you get sort of a, a second jab at it without violating double jeopardy. Right. So those are our first two. Mm-hmm. How are we getting more? How are we getting more? Okay, this is exciting to me because okay. I've done prosecution and I've done criminal defense, mm-hmm. but now I am focused on civil law. So I do mostly personal injury accident law mm-hmm. and I get excited about how these civil things come in because what do you have? What do you do? Right. And in this case, I'm so fascinated because there were two parts. So it's okay. it's two trials. Okay. One case. One case. So we're going to take, okay, and I've got my notes here. I'm going to do scrunchies. And at some point, it's not going to look so ridiculous <laughs> with my little yellow legal pad notes. But that's how I work here. Um, so <laughs> we have this amazing civil case. We've got the two criminal cases, same mm-hmm. facts. Okay, we're yes. just going to assume for purposes of just talking for a quick second is it's the video. Okay. Yes. The video is the main evidence. There's more, but it's obviously, yeah. the video for the first trial, mm-hmm. the video for the second trial, and it's the same video for the third trial. So we're hitting three or cases. We're hitting three mm-hmm. cases on the same thing. Right. Um, different elements of proof. Right. So again, as we talk, talked about in the first one, we're hitting different burdens of proof yep. between the civil and and the criminal, but we're also, so in this case, the the state charges versus the federal charges yeah. sort of have, were different crimes and different elements that needed to be proven. Um, so say, same standard there, but now that we're moving into the, the civil area, it's a less difficult standard to meet. Yes, it is. So we had, for both of the criminal trials, mm-hmm. state and federal, mm-hmm. they're the same burden. Yes. So whether you try it in state, you've still got beyond a reasonable doubt. It has to be your felony. You have to convict someone beyond mm-hmm. a reasonable doubt. Jump over to the feds, same thing. You have to convict him, them beyond a reasonable well, doubt. Then. And two of them were, not all four. Mm-hmm. So again, we continue to get some outrage and some outcries, but two of them at least were convicted of the mm-hmm. civil rights violations, yes. which for the feds are criminal charges. Yes. Then... We jump over to uh, my favorite because that's what I'm doing. And it really is quite fascinating. That was 1991 was when this happened. Um, 92, 1992 was when the first criminal state charges went. 93 are the federal charges. And then 94, we've got the suit. And 94 is when OJ was charged with murder. So it overlaps directly. Completely overlaps. And so this is the first case that, Rodney King is actually a party to the case. You know, that's a great point. And I know this, but that's the first time it's been said aloud, so my mind picks it up. That's a great yes. point, Chelsea. What's, tell us more about that part. So I think, obviously, Rodney King and the riots and the cases, his name is what's put out there. But yeah. in both of the first trials, um, state and federal, they were both criminal. So you're going to have you know, the United States of America versus these police officers or yes. California or whatever county they were in versus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, it's good. State of California. Yeah. yeah. State of California versus the police officers as mm-hmm. defendants. Um, and while it's about the crimes that were committed against Rodney King, he is not a party. To He's not. Suits. 
And that's the difference with yes. him and OJ is OJ was a defendant. Right. He was the one who allegedly committed the crimes. Right. And we call them the Rodney King cases, but they're not a charge against no. Rodney King. They're charges against the four police officers. Right. He's the victim. Who beat him as the victim. Yes. But he wasn't a, he wasn't a party because yeah. nobody represented him as a victim. No. He testified, but nobody... Right. He there was, was no attorney saying, he's my victim. The complaining witness. Like that... Yeah is i mean that that is what those cases were so this is the it first is. one where he and his legal team his attorney yeah. have the opportunity to bring the case that they want to present yes um and sort of the cause of causes of action which i'm sure you'll get into <laughs> of, <laughs> of what they are alleging and again that burden of proof is different yes um so tell me a little bit about what happened okay i'll only brace so, myself yeah no this is so fascinating because it is, it is a civil lawsuit, so he was the plaintiff. Mm -hmm. um, he was the injured party yes. who brought a claim against against the four officers. Jointly? Um, jointly. Okay. So they did it in one, in civil case, you can have one case, plaintiff versus defendants. Um, you can in criminal too, but it's much, much more common yes. in um, civil cases where mm -hmm. you will have one complaint that alleges, here are all the defendants. Yes, who were possible, involved yes. in my case. All the possible people who wronged me, who owe mm -hmm. me money, who deserved it. I deserve something from them. Okay. And in his, he went after everyone. I mean, everyone, including the mayor, was sued. I mean, fair. <laughs> and that's what the team argued is yeah. the, the fundamental, and I'm so skipping around, it's a little tangential here and a little. But I mean, that's but what we do. Year, and that's how we do. Um, so he. Truly, it's brilliant legal maneuvering. Okay. Absolutely brilliant. I got to hand it to these this team. Um, OJ had six attorneys. It seems like um, Rodney King also had six attorneys six for his civil magic number? Cases. It must be. People hire six attorneys, but I mean, I don't know how you're going to pay them unless you win, but hire some attorneys. Um, so these six people, what they did is they put together... One complaint with mm -hmm. multiple counts against multiple parties. Okay. And to the best of what I could figure out, there are eight separate groups of people or, or entities that were sued. Wow. He sued the city of Los Angeles. Yes. The police chief, Daryl Gale. Mm -hmm. The Los Angeles Police Department. Okay. The and, and this one I didn't quite understand, and I still don't have a great answer to, um, but feel free to look it up. Research project. L.A. Unified School District. So why the school district, I'm not entirely sure, but that was one of the parties. The mayor. Mm -hmm. 21 police officers. Okay. Okay. Um, and that included the four. Mm -hmm. Or it was included or in addition. The 21 police wow. officers, which may have included or may have been in addition to the four actual officers who, inv who, who were involved. involved in the beating. And then um, seven CHP officers and two school police officers. So again, I'm not entirely sure how, how the school school is involved. And mm -hmm. in the end, they weren't found liable of any anything. Okay. So in the end, it ultimately didn't matter. They were sued. They didn't pay anything. And the civil suit only was found against, I think, the city of L.A., Okay. Um, I think that was the only one, only finding that was made. Okay. Was in favor of, oh, actually it was nine attorneys. I apologize. Oh, wow. It was nine attorneys rather than six. He went up to OJ. Yeah, he really did, didn't he? Um, but he, I mean, he didn't know he was on a one yes. up in him. Um, I'll have to come back to it in my notes, but it yeah. was, I believe uh, from my notes and from what I saw, it actually was, only the city of LA or the LAPD, but I think it's only the city of LA that was found liable. Okay. So what were the sort of, and we can narrow it down yeah. with, again with all the defendants, but narrow it down to either the LAPD or the city of LA. Mm -hmm. What were, what was Rodney King and his legal team alleging? They were in federal court. Okay. For this civil case, which is interesting to me because mm -hmm. I, I deal with state court. Yeah. 
And to me, I'm like, how do you do a civil case in federal court? And a lot of attorneys do. And I props to them because they know a lot more than I do. Um, but they have, I mean, there are federal civil lawsuits yes. and they're usually civil rights related. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what this okay. was, is it was a civil rights case um, where some of the indictment, not indictments or allegations here. I am mixing up civil and criminal, right? The indictment, the indictment. Okay. Let's get to like straight up civil versus criminal indictment. Chelsea, what is it? Criminal. Yes. And what is it? If it is criminal, like what does it mean though? To be indicted? Yeah. To be charged with. Okay. Well, not necessarily. So like, (laughs) okay. Let's get around civil and criminal law. Third year, first year. (laughs) Don't let my law school see this. Oh. <laughs> At least you're prepping for the bar now. <laughs> right, we're right. <laughs> so when you're indicted, that does mean you're charged. Or char- charges can be brought, right? Yes. Like a grand jury indictment. There, it's like, there right, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. You have been um, charged with a crime, yes. but it's that a grand jury specifically has charged you with that crime, that they have found enough evidence that you probably did it. Um, and so they're going to put you in trial. Yes. And okay. Small tangent again, as I do, Mm -hmm. but the thing about grand juries, which I did not realize until law school, this was like probably our first week of our crim pro class, criminal procedure, obviously. (laughs) Well, Um, obvious to you, right? As a law student, but crim pro does refer to criminal procedure for those who don't know. I feel like I explain the wrong things (laughs) and like don't explain enough on the others, but that when I did not, in my mind, prior to law school, I assumed a grand jury was essentially a scaled down version of mm. what the trial would be. But that's not it. A grand jury not usually. does not hear essentially any defense evidence, right? Correct. That it's the prosecution who presents. And the reason why is because the prosecution has the burden to bring the charges. Like it makes yeah. sense. But in my mind, it was essentially just like a mini version of the eventual trial. But no, like a grand jury who's choosing whether to indict is really mm-hmm. only going to hear the state side of things. Correct. And because that's a grand jury is separate from Mm -hmm. um, the judges and it's different than a preliminary hearing. Um, So we'll come back to that on another episode because that's not quite what we're doing, but just a fun fact. (laughs) No, but it's important. And it is a fun fact because a preliminary hearing is much more like a mini trial than a grand jury because a grand jury just is in a little room. There's evidence presented to the grand jury by a prosecutor Um, usually by detectives, Mm -hmm. officers involved, and they decide, yeah, there's enough evidence to move forward with trial. Right. Whereas if they're charged initially by a police officer, Mm -hmm. then that's brought to a judge in a preliminary hearing. Mm -hmm. The judge hears it as their probable cause. um, And if they believe there's probable cause to continue, then that's bumped up to the the circuit court. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, tangent, but yeah, such maybe a tangent. interesting. Um, so I guess we go back to the federal court. So it's federal yes. civil case. So we're in federal court. We're yes. in the civil arena. Mm-hmm. And some of the claims were that they are liable for civil rights violations. Mm-hmm. So this is not guilty of civil rights where they were in the criminal trial. Right, but liable. But liable, that they're responsible for the um, civil rights violation. And some of the quotes here are really interesting that this this beating was not an aberration um, or one of you know one of a kind that it's not the right. first of its kind. It was not an aberration, but rather the latest in a long series of excessive use of force incidents involving local law enforcement. Um, others that were in the other language that was put into the the lawsuit, the complaint was. Mm-hmm. Rodney King was brutally attacked by Los Angeles police officer Powell using a police baton and then in turn by Los Angeles police sergeant Stacy Kuhn using a taser gun and thereafter by Los Angeles police um, department officer Ted Brasino and Los Angeles police officer David Love. Um, they were seeing, so basically they're putting all of it in of these are all the people who are involved this is what was done to mm-hmm. me because it's Rodney yes. King now, right? He's Bringing the party. Yes. This is what was done to me. Mm-hmm. And I think some of you are responsible. They went into the, that the defendants fostered an atmosphere of overt and tacit anti-black racism within the Los Angeles police department. So ultimately their civil case mm-hmm. 
was not just negligence. It wasn't right. just there was negligent hiring within the department. Training. There was negligent training. These are these are common civil themes. Which of, would be, yeah, you would think that that's what it would be. And it was in a way, but what they're saying is it wasn't just negligent hiring and supervision, mm-hmm. but there it was systemic racism that was supported yeah. and encouraged and even looked at you know, kind of looked a blind eye to you right. within the Los Angeles police department that the civil case said went all the way up through the ranks to the city mm-hmm. and the mayor and right. the police chief and all these other officers that it was just such systemic racism mm-hmm. that because of this, ultimately Rodney King as a black man became subject to the racism that was systemic in mm-hmm. the department And was brutally beaten and had damages. Yes. And so I'm going to go out on a limb here. I keep hitting the mic about what some of the arguments made were. And you can tell me how close I am. Yeah, please. I would guess that the fact that one of the four officers was a sergeant, right? Yes. One was a sergeant. That was Kuhn. So that the fact that enough officers did that, felt it was okay, and did that in front of sort of a superior officer would would be convincing evidence, I would think, compelling evidence. Um, and I think we touched on this in the last episode. You'll have to get my details correct, but I believe Part two. all of them had previous incidents about use of force. Yes, they so did. So all of them. And, and yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the other episode because yes, if you haven't caught part one and part two, do go back. Um, we've got mm-hmm. it on podcast and we've got it on video in YouTube for mm-hmm. the podcast. So check out either or both. In the video, you get to see our random pink blankets and the dogs wandering in and out. Um, but both of them have the audio yeah. and they will tell you a little bit about the the background, yeah. much more in depth about the facts of yes. each of the Rodney King and OJ Simpson. So if you need to catch up on those, do go back. Mm-hmm. Um, listener, watch one or you know both of them to catch up with Mm -hmm. it. And then there's also the legal weekly wine that we have on Fridays where we've also been hitting a little bit of civil versus criminal in more recent matters. Um, the recent headlines. So we touch on those Mm -hmm. like subscribe, um, sign up, give us a comment, something so that we can keep this going and you guys can get notified when we do. But with the offset, and I keep saying but, I swear, I'm I'm going to have to get my own t-shirt that says but, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Um, <laughs> so, so, no. but. Um, yeah, the officers right. had had prior incidents, and that's exactly what was happening, is the one sergeant, I think it, no, it was either Coon or Powell, the one of the mm-hmm. supervisors, and Kuhn was, was the sergeant. But there was also a supervisor and then Powell. two supervisees, for Correct. lack of a better word. Powell was the one who was a supervisor. He was a trainer, mm-hmm. but he was not the sergeant. But he was in a supervisory yes. role. And he he had... There we go. Sorry, all my notes. Again, I'm no, going to so get thorough. a better system... Yeah, but I, I'm thorough, but I have a crazy system that looks ridiculous. So, yeah, come and see my ridiculous system. The <laughs> Powell, it was Powell who had already had a civil lawsuit before yes. the Rodney King arrest, had already had a civil lawsuit that was a $70,000 settlement for breaking a man's elbow with a baton. Um, Kuhn had had prior, that's the, Kuhn is the mm-hmm. sergeant. He had had prior excessive force complaint, um, and a suspension. And then Brasino had been suspended before for hitting and kicking a handcuffed suspect. And then all of this was what happened in the Rodney King beating is that yes. the four officers among the four officers, they mm-hmm. beat, hit him with a taser gun, um, beat him with a nightstick or two. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how many were involved. They kicked him. They stomped on him and right. creating incredible, terrible injuries. Right. Um, so, and so all of that just goes yeah. to this sort of systemic issue of, yes. And we talk about certain things within mm-hmm. civil law of, well, the police department, was clearly on notice that these officers behaved that way. Yeah. Um, it was, I mean, it was in their own documentation from the police department, right? It, it was. Yes. I mean, these are, they're clear. They're uh, yes. episodes of, um, goodness, I'm feeling at the word, but uh, pun- not punishment, not 
a reprimand. There you go. Thank you. Reprimand. Here we go. Ew. Reprimand. Yes. Right. A, a reprimands like that are in their or, records. Right. Their employee records are in their employee records. And oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm so glad you said this. For those of you, okay, we had to, last time, because it was Rodney King, we had to do some, be careful with what we're coming up next to. If you're sensitive to it, don't listen, Mm -hmm. don't watch because of the videos. Um, I'm going to say the same thing with what I'm about to come back to, but it's perfect that you said it because it is so on target. Um, Here it is. In talking about the systemic racism Mm -hmm. and the systemic use of force that the plaintiff was alleging in this case advisory warning that the things that I'm going to say are very awful um, and could be very triggering to some. So on the radio Mm -hmm. that night when the officers are reporting, yeah, are you waiting for it? Chelsea, are you okay? No, no, I'm good. I'm okay. I know we've said some really tough stuff in the last three sessions. Where's, where are dogs? I was going to say, yeah, you're not helping enough. You're just, you're just chilling without hugging. This is, I have the blanket. (laughs) Charlie's not even here. Sky abandoned us. Struck a model pose. I love it. Yeah, she did. She's adorable. Okay, so sorry you can't hug a dog. It's okay. I got my trusty pillow. I'm the pillow, to. yes. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to hold on to my fuzzy blanket. We have on scene after Rodney King and the couple passengers mm-hmm. were beat, but him especially, the radio buzz started going to the dispatch, right? Yeah. And they're catching all of this stuff on dispatch of what are, the calls are being recorded right. of what's being called in, what's being said between the officers and dispatch. And these are awful. One of them, and I don't know which one, says, oops, I haven't beaten anyone this bad in a long time. That's one statement. The response by dispatch was, oh, not again. Why did you do that? I thought you agreed to chill out for a while. And then there was another that said, I think he was dusted, many broken bones after a long pursuit. And at the hospital, final one, and then Mm -hmm. everybody else can tune back in or whatever, the final one was there was evidence in the trial and putting together the civil yeah. rights, um, the the systemic issue of brutality and racism is the fact that at the hospital, at least one, and I think it was probably two or more, mm-hmm. but at least one of the officers was bragging to the nurses about how many times he had hit Rodney King. And the medical records show that he'd actually been hit 50 to 56 times. Um, So in talking about the civil case and what do you prove, and his burden of proof was more likely than not. That was his burden. I think that would have been beyond a reasonable doubt. That seems like it to me. But there wasn't as hard an issue where still with the beyond a reasonable doubt, they acquitted two of them still, even in the federal ones. But yeah. now in the civil ones, a jury found, now it wasn't, all 12 didn't need to find in, in California, nine, they have a jury of nine, a oh. jury of 12 in civil cases, but only nine have to agree. So interesting. Right. Yeah. In, in Virginia and Maryland, um, we have six jury members on a civil tri- trial. Mm-hmm. Um, so in criminal, you have 12 jurors. Yeah. Civil, you have six. Most everybody assumes it's 12. It's yeah. 12 everywhere. And in some cases it is. So in Maryland and Virginia, it's only six in a civil trial. But in California, it's funky because there are 12, or at least at this time there were. I can't, I can't tell you right now. But yeah. somebody from California <laughs> let us know if this is still the same. At least at that time, it was 12 jurors, but nine of them had to agree. So instead of all 12. Uh Uh-huh. So you didn't have to have a unanimous verdict. You could have nine, so the majority, super super majority. Um, And then it was only nine had to determine that it was more likely than not Mm -hmm. that these claims were true. So a significant decrease in... Yeah. Right? And It's easier to prove. Easier to prove, maybe... Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about the judicial sort of efficiency there. You would think oh, the likelihood of a mistrial would be significantly decreased. You're not going to have these hung juries. It moves things. Not, not as much in civil. 
Y- yeah. You, you have some. I mean, y- there's these hung juries where nobody can decide. They can't agree. Mm-hmm. It's usually like one or two holdouts. That's what I'm thinking. Um, but in this, the nine out of 12 would get rid of that. If you want to have your does. three holdouts, sure, yeah. fine. Go hold out. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. Right. Um, so we have, yeah, for for this one, I, I I wish I'd looked as to whether it was just nine or all unanimous. And I, I mm-hmm. wish I had looked and I didn't. So drop it in the comments. Um, yeah. Let us know. But at least nine of them okay. decided that it Rodney was- King had proven his case. Okay. Now let me throw an interesting twist at you. I'm okay. going to throw two interesting twists at you. Okay, I'm ready. And we're going to conclude this civil case and run over to wrapping it up together. Of okay, Like perfect. what in the world. Okay, interesting fact one, and then make me come back to number two. <laughs> interesting fact one for the civil case is that um, it was only a trial for damages. There was no liability. <laughs> so after I told you, I just told okay. you that I've set you up. I totally you set you up. Because I just told you that, you know, they found him liable. Right. Well, the did because the um, defense even agreed that he was. They stipulated to it? Yeah. It was... It Are was, you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. See, a twist. That is a twist. Fun twist on a civil case. So in civil cases, um, you have to prove that they're... Sorry, microphone. You have to prove that they're liable, that yeah. they're responsible. They did it. Kind right. of like a criminal trial with right. I mean, charges. Right, I mean, if anybody's, you know, been in a car accident, it's common. If someone rear ends you, first you have to prove that this person rear ended you, and then you have to prove for the second part how much that costs to fix or medical bills or whatever. Yeah, damages. Now, but in in our little mini microcosm here mm-hmm. of especially a lot of our car accidents is it is fairly straightforward. Yeah. You rear ended me. Okay, you you did it. Yeah, and so a- it's not worth sort of litigating. Exactly. So most of them settle, but if they don't. I actually have, we have, we go to the court and half of my cases are because we got to figure out who's liable. Okay. Is the mm-hmm. defendant liable for it? Did they do it? And then if they did, what did they owe? What's their damages? Yes. But the other half is, well, they already agreed that they're liable, but we didn't like the settlement. That it just right. wasn't enough. We couldn't reach terms. The defense didn't want to settle. They just mm-hmm. wanted to send it up to the judge. So we get this. The other half of our cases that go to trial are those like Rodney King's mm-hmm. where they say, you know what? We're going to admit that we did these things. We don't right. want to have a trial on that. We're going to admit this. But the question for the jury is going to be, now that we are liable. Right. They're, so they're not being asked mm-hmm. to decide you know, using the standard of more likely than not, did the officers, you know, violate the civil rights? Yeah. They're not being asked that question. That question has been agreed that yes, the answer is yes, and we're not arguing it. It was. And even with the nine and 12, like Mm -hmm. I I did it, I did a setup for you. Um, In that particular question, it was, they weren't given a choice. They were told this is what it is. Their question was, if it had been, pro- you know, with the proof mm-hmm. of the excessive use of force, with the proof of the prior incidents, with the proof of the systemic issues within the LAPD, yeah. how much does that amount for damages to right. Rodney King? What is it worth? What are his injuries? All those ones, gosh, last time we and listed horrific. out all of his injuries, which included got broken leg, broken facial bones. Skull. Yeah, skull, 11 skull fractures. I mean, truly, they. I feel that he's lucky to be alive. I mean, those injuries were that severe um, that it very easily could have resulted in in death. Uh, yeah, it really could have. And so he, I'm going to throw back the. Throw oh, this please, back yeah, on you. Now that I've been I've been mulling over uh-huh. my surprise twist yes, here. Me. I would think, based on just what I know, that the decision to stipulate to liability. Charlie's back um, with us. Come on, Charlie. Come on, Charlie Beds. Oh, there might you be because if that's not up for a question, um, if that's just stipulated to the evidence that you would use to sort of go back and forth with that might be prejudicial for damages, right? Is that like a, d- a defense strategy? It could be. Um, but because it's still part of a trial, the defense mm-hmm. strategy in this case was actually to say, Okay, it's bad. 
Um, we owe something, but not that much. Right. That was the strategy is to whittle down the amount of damages is to say, we got to pay something we'll pay, yes. but it should only cost us this much money because that much money is too much. It wasn't that bad. It's kind of how they're saying it. Right. And they had experts. It was this battle of the experts where these doctors would come in and the plaintiff says, I have brain damage. I have mm-hmm. extensive brain damage. It's going to affect me the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I can no longer work or have limited work because of this. So I'm not going to make as much the rest of my life. You should right. pay me that. Um, I have all these other medical issues. There was kidney failure that was at, at wow. question. Um, and the plaintiff said, you have caused all these things and yes. this is what they're worth. The defense says, okay, we caused the breaks in the skull. We, we, yeah. had the the broken bones, all of these things, but we'll pay you for those medical expenses, which right. were about 200000 So we'll pay you that back. Fine. We'll give you that money. Okay. But eh, we don't think you really have brain damage. And so there, was an ex- there were experts on each side who got up and said, does he have brain damage? And if so, how much? And what are the, what's going to be? Yeah. How long is it going to go? Is what's it permanent? You know, is it really affecting his lifestyle, his way of life yes. type of things. Yeah. So that was what the case was. It was a battle of the experts and ultimately what the jury decided. And those pe- they had to agree because okay. they had to come up with a number from right. somewhere. And they agreed to, their verdict was more than the defense had offered in settlement. Okay. And less than the plaintiff had asked for in settlement. So they kind of split the baby. A little bit, but the jury didn't know what those oh, numbers were. I guess, were. yeah. Isn't that interesting? They d- okay, this is, so I know that they wouldn't know what the sort of settlement negotiations had been, but they don't know what the complaint, the number put on the complaint is? They do know that. Oh, that's a good, yeah. that's a good differentiation. They do on the complaint depending okay. on which jurisdiction. Right. I don't know in this complaint. I couldn't find a copy of it. Um, I looked high and low. I could find some excerpts from yeah. it, but I could not find a copy of complaint. it. Um, I might be able to publicly if I lived in California and walked in there, yeah. but not online. I couldn't find it easily. Um, but what I do know from my own areas mm-hmm. of Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, you list certain things. So in yeah. some places you say plaintiff you know, is asking that they there be a finding against the defense and is asking for the sum of X amount of money. Exactly, yes. So they can ask for what, 53 million, I don't know. Yeah, 53 whatever. million I'm asking for. In other jurisdictions, it's in excess of a certain amount, okay? Okay. I'm looking for damages. They're not saying how much, but it's in excess of 75,000. Okay. Um, or there are other times where you just don't li- list them. So no. it's a, just yeah. kind of ask for the jury to make their own determination or judge or whatever. Yeah, we ask for you to find, hi, baby. He's so sweet. My um, my little Charlie boy is just being a prima donna because <laughs> he wants to take over everything. Why are you looking at me like that? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tangents with our dogs. We love our dogs. Show us pics of your dogs. You yeah. know what? Put them in the comments um, love it. on YouTube or even if you can on the podcast. I'm not sure if you can because I don't know that part. But throw us up some pictures of the dogs. Sure. We've got um, some Twitter posts going on, mm-hmm. some Facebook, TikTok. some TikTok. Um, so find us on all of those and put some pictures of your dogs. We would love to see them. Put their names on them. Absolutely. Um, do a selfie. We love dogs. So send us your dogs too. We love it. <laughs> No, they make us so happy, especially when we're talking about literally such dark, terrible things. Yeah. Um, But so liability was not an issue. um, And they came to a number. They did. came to a number. They came to a number. um, And as I said before, I think their number was was only against the city of LA. I Mm -hmm. think that was the only finding. Sorry, crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. All my notes again. Um, Yeah. Indicative of grossly inadequate training, constitutionally deficient hiring and disciplinary procedure, Mm -hmm. custom of racial bias. Um, Where is the... Huh. I cannot find... Ah, there were... No, that was still the other... Okay. I'm going to have to... There it is. Here it is right here. After all that looking... They did find that he his all of his medical expenses had to be repaid, so that was roughly two two hundred thousand. Wow! 
and some lost income that they put a number on. But the overall damages, yep, only city found liable. There it is. The only damages that were found for them, it was over $3.8 million. Wow. In total compensatory damages. Wow. Um, then they also awarded... Punitive? Close. Oh, Very close. Oh, stop it. Cursy word. We are not a cursy I word. I didn't even realize I thing. said it. We are not that kind of podcast. I love Chelsea. Um, Erica's going to kill me. My husband does not love her through these programs. <laughs> Because he does a lot of our editing. So, um, sorry, Eric. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Didn't even realize I said it. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Hopefully he can just take all that, this shuffling. He can just. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can just edit it. So I'm going to pause okay. as if we might be able to edit mm-hmm. it. <laughs> um, so anyway. Uh, okay. $3.8 million in damages with only the city found liable. Mm-hmm. $1.7 million in attorney's fees. Wow. So well, I mean, um, he had nine attorneys. It, right, he did. I mean, how do you divvy up that? I, I, in the end, I probably would have been like, yeah, that's not enough. As no. any one of these nine attorneys. <laughs> like, that totally wasn't enough. Maybe I'll have better business. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's still good. It's still a substantial amount that he was awarded by the jury right. in attorney's fees, which is a little bit different mm-hmm. than, you know, in the criminal trial that OJ had, right? We're yes. going to go back to that circling a little bit around. Mm-hmm. Full circle right here. Full circle is OJ's case for the the criminal one. Mm-hmm. A jury can't award attorney's no. fees. No, no, no. You can't give any money. The only thing you can do is decide, is he guilty? Right. And in that case, he was found not guilty. So who's responsible for his legal fees? He is. He is. Right. So he was the one personally paying Johnny Cochran and everybody else. In this one, for the civil one, it was decided that this was so bad Mm -hmm. that he actually got compensated also for the attorney's fees he had to spend to bring the cases um, to help him. Right. Which... I mean, it makes sense to me, you know, if someone is a plaintiff in a civil suit, you know, whether it's a car accident or something like this, a lot of the times they just cannot afford to willy nilly go out and get an attorney. So it's it's good to see at least that that was um, accounted for in the jury's verdict. Definitely. So here's the final twist on the civil case. Okay. (laughs) Here's part four. So we had the first three trials and we have the same civil case, but there was a fourth trial. How is there a fourth trial? How is there a fourth trial? <laughs> Especially when we only have damages, right? Maybe it's bifurcated yes. to liability versus damages. Right. But in this case... Okay, so we were in federal civil court. Yeah. Is it civil state court? Like, are we... That's a great, that's a great thought. Okay. It's a really great thought and question. And yes. frankly, he could have, okay. right? Because it's... We're looking at double jeopardy. We're looking at different charges, different claims. And you could have also brought a civil claim in C court against any of these actors. He didn't. Or if he did, I don't know about it and can't find it anywhere. Um, But in this one, there was one case, civil case brought against all these actors, but especially for the four, for the four individuals. Okay. They were included in a punitive damage Trial, which has been separated out. Yeah, there, finally. <laughs> I've been waiting for the punitive Part damages three and a half to come to four. In. There's your punitive. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. What happened in that trial? So in that trial, this this was this was fascinating. Brilliant. In that in that <laughs> trial, they actually had the officers themselves testify and their family members. The officers' family members? Yeah. The officer's family members testified. As like character, wit- I mean, yeah. what for? They said it was it was actually really quite sad. Um, especially one of them, one of them had their wife testify and it was really quite heartbreaking. That's Not like sad, all of this isn't, because right. it is really heartbreaking, all of this. But um, one of the officer's wives testified that um, they'd been punished enough. That as a result, and I mean, you got to feel bad for the the spouses. The family, absolutely. Uh, right, is they didn't do anything. They, yeah. they just, they woke up one morning and their husbands were on the news beating Rodney King. Right. Um, but 
they truly, they testified of the defense was basically, they're now impoverished and have nothing left and they've suffered Um. enough. They've lost their jobs. They've been suspended. There, two of them were in jail at that point. Um, one one claim some people thought went a little too far mm-hmm. was the defense said they have been victimized just like Rodney King. That yeah, I see. I see your face, and that was the, yeah. the reaction a lot of other people had too. Is okay. I can get I can get behind the they've been suffering. Yes. I can get behind that they have the, right. clearly been punished in the court of public opinion. Absolutely. And they are pariahs in the community, which is what they were saying. They mm-hmm. were outcasts. They no longer had friends. They no longer had family. Some sure. of their churches had abandoned them. Um, and But this particular phrase of the defense did not sit well. Because they're like, well, they're not victim. Rodney King was the victim. Right. Yeah, I think they're the ones who victimized Rodney King, and they're just suffering the consequences of their own actions. actions. Yeah, I think defense work is important. Yeah, um, I think zealously defending your client as a defense attorney is critical. Yeah, but I think that that whether intentional or slip of the tongue, something that just was said is that is bad. That is just bad for everybody. That's bad for your client. That is offensive to the actual victim. That's bad. That is a it, bad take. Yeah, it definitely, it, it, it wasn't very good. It didn't go over well. In the end though, it was fascinating because <sighs> Brasino, one of the officers, mm-hmm. Brasino countersued wow. claiming that King shoved him first so he's responsible for all of it. The jury agreed. What? It is fun. I mean, it's not fun. Yes. Please, no, no, no. please don't misunderstand me. Here it comes out. I'm the lawyer. Legally. The legal, like, maneuvering the strategy. This is fascinating stuff. This is why I'm an attorney. Right. Is because of this. This is interesting. That's the but for causation, right? Yes. But for you having pushed me, none of this would have happened. Was his claim. And it was successful. It was successful. But you remember the Casey Anthony discussion, and this goes to the Legal Weekly Wine. Yes. Okay, so the first episode of the Legal Weekly Wine three weeks ago, mm-hmm. that's our Friday show where we take on the, the current events. Yes. We were talking about Casey Anthony. Yeah. Do you remember the discussion we had about, well, could Kaylee Anthony's father, whoever he is, could he sue? Do you remember that? Yes, yes. and- but me, yeah, tell me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. essentially the thing is, yes, you could, but there are no damages to recover. And so in this case, I'm assuming that the jury was like, sure, but for causation, you can say that, you know, but for this action, none of this would have happened, but yeah. there are no damages for you to recover. Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. Good Which, job. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> a plus. <laughs> Look, just tell the bar examiners that and- <laughs> We're going to get her pre-admitted somehow. Like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. Is there like, okay, yeah, but uh, you get nothing. Yeah, because, I mean, truly, mm-hmm. it's not like there were medical bills or, yeah. I mean. Uh, there, there weren't. I mean, who's who's really getting the medical bills is the poor guy right. smushed on the, of course. on the ground. Um, but, yeah, so they said, okay, you're right, but who cares? So the punitives were awash. Really? Nobody got punitive damages on either side. So in, in some sense, the police officers won that part of I mean, the, the battle. Yeah. But overall, they lost it. And then we have OJ. Right. Which brings us completely full circle. It does. So we're going to wrap this up as far as yeah. how it all relates. We started out with the civil versus criminal law with OJ Simpson. Right. This is the pinnacle. But I think... And, and you're the one to tell me, yeah. is, is that the better case or is it just the more well-known for the civil versus criminal law or does Rodney King actually hit more of the topics and intricacies of the differences mm-hmm. of civil versus criminal law? I think this is my takeaway, final thoughts, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, OJ is really helpful 
to understand the basics. It's famous. Most of the general facts, the facts are less confusing. Yeah. The parties are less confusing. I think it's a very straightforward way to yeah. understand civil criminal. There's not too Two many. Trials. Yes. There's not too many complications. Um, you're not dealing with federal law versus state law. It's a pretty simple way to understand, which is why I'm actually glad that we did that first and then circled back around in time, you know, get our little time machine <laughs> and come before, um, because I think that gave a great background to understanding the, and I will say this, even in my three LOL here, um, this is very complicated in sort of yeah. how each suit was brought and the, what was alleged, what the defenses were, this I mean, and you've been practicing. This still seems fairly complicated, fairly intricate series of events. The facts are intricate. Yeah. The part there's a lot of more parties. I think that this was illuminating, and I'm. I think that I'll. I think OJ is the better case because more people understand it generally. Yeah. Um, so, so sort of in a, in a broad sense. But if you really want to like get into the details of what civil law looks like and the strategies mm -hmm. there. I think it's worth digging into. And if there is something you guys still have questions about, I know that was, yeah. I mean, that was a lot. <laughs> it, wa it was a lot. And even then we're still mm -hmm. getting into the timeframes, right? Yes. On, over all of that, you've got the, the Rodney King starting mm -hmm. and then right in the middle of this race uproar, the LA riots, mm -hmm. everything, the legal issues then jump into OJ. Yes. And we have in talking about even more mm -hmm. issues that they brought up legally later is jury selection. Did, can, can we get some more African-Americans on the jury, right? Right. Because there were hardly, there were none in the first Rodney King case. Mm -hmm. There were two right. in the second. And we jumped from that to eight or nine mm -hmm. African-Americans on the OJ Simpson trial. Right. And I think it's the other issue that we've talked about, I think in, all three episodes at this point, and maybe even in a couple of the weekly wines of the media changing. I keep bringing this up, but I think no, it's it, relevant. But it is relevant. When you talk about jury selection, because um, ideally you would get a jury where nobody knows anything about the case. They right. don't know the parties. They don't know the scenario. But that truly was next to impossible with both of these. You've got two cases in L.A., mm -hmm. right? Two cases with the LA, LAPD. Mm -hmm. Two cases where they're both alleging that the LAPD messed up. Yes. Right? The one for intrinsic racism and excessive use of force where they have brutally beaten an African-American man. Yes. And then you come to OJ where the defense is alleging that the LAPD is so incompetent and still so racist mm -hmm. that they're framing OJ Simpson. Right. Right. And that they're incompetent, so they're losing and co-mingling evidence mm -hmm. and causing it to be contaminated. So that's the defense that OJ relies on, right. is they go after the LAPD. So it's like, okay, well, here's Rodney King, right? Yeah. There's a, a, a chase yep. with the LAPD. Mm -hmm. There's a black man who's been wronged yes. is the idea that OJ used just like there was in Rodney King. Mm -hmm. This department is systemic racism. There are all these weird issues with the evidence. We think these detectives planted evidence in the car that OJ mm -hmm. had. We think they planted evidence in his house and at the crime scene. Then they just messed it all up. So they're either completely racist and planting evidence or they're completely mm -hmm. incompetent, but it all comes back to the LAPD. Yep. And it all comes back to this time, this period of time yeah. between 1991 and 1994, where the, they just couldn't get it right. And yeah. that is, it truly bled over into it. Mm -hmm. There was a juror in the OJ Simpson trial as they were trying to figure out, well, is with the makeup of the jury in the OJ Simpson trial, how can, we're so astonished at the Rodney King verdict, but now we're equally astonished with the the OJ verdict. Is like, well, how can they, how can they get off? How can the police officers right. get off? And how can OJ get off? Right. And for OJ, the idea was, or the the claim was, yeah. well, maybe it was a backlash for Rodney King that if mm -hmm. you were going to let 
white men off that we're going to let a black man off. And it was almost a a tit for tat idea. Not that that was actually the case. And I'm not saying that it was, but these are some of the theories that were posited and may have some grain of truth in it as to why the outcomes came as they were. And they are at least a social commentary Mm -hmm. to the background to consider in all of these cases and what happened with the jury, with the civil cases, with the criminal cases, and how in the civil cases, both civil cases came back around to try to, in a sense, make up for the the quote unquote wrong Mm -hmm. verdicts in the public eye of the the criminal trials. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I think you encapsulated a lot of it. I think the thing that sticks out most to me, sort of not being there and then looking back at both of them, is that, I mean, I think it's very clear my opinions on the OJ case and what I think happened. But I do think that bad police work is reasonable doubt. And that- So did the jury. That Exactly. Like it or not- um, and again, you talk about the complexities of like humans and how we think about things and being unbiased or not. But I think it's been very publicly proven that there yeah. are at least some members who are upper echelons of the LAPD who yes. are racist, who are intentionally hurting people, all of those right. things. And even if you attempt to do your best to separate that from the task at hand, can you really? Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's hard to. And one of the O.J. Simpson juror members, I believe, I'm pretty sure I'm remembering this one right, because I, I tried to read up on it for the first yeah. one, um, but I'm using it on the third one, is if I recall, at the verdict, when the verdict mm-hmm. was read, acquitting O.J. Simpson, one of the African-American men stood up and actually did a black power sign, wow. held up a black yeah. power sign in the jury box. So a lot of people took that as okay, it's right. this is this is where it is. But you know, then you get all the way to twenty twenty two and we've had George Floyd and Right. I, I I mean, are we circling back around to are we are we at OJ again? Right. I yeah, I think that it's and I think maybe that's another point too, that for me, there are I've grown up with mm-hmm. tons of Uh, I mean, more than I can truly like count or specify, but George Floyd is the big one that's happened semi-recently. That at least you were alive for. Yes, but (laughs) fair enough. Fair enough. This seems to be the only one. (laughs) I'm so old. (laughs) You are not. But, But know that there have been, I mean, throughout my lifetime, tons and tons and tons. And it seems to be, at least in sort of the reporting I read about, you know, everything that happened for Andy King, that they have been exposed and now we can fix it. And yeah. it, it is a little disheartening to think that we are now decades later and we are still having videos pop up that are reminiscent, if not, you know, mm-hmm. parallel. So a lot to think about there. There is. So we hope, we really hope yeah. that you have enjoyed the last three episodes, part one, two, and three of Civil versus Criminal Law. Um, jumping back yeah. into what we think is the the best cases for mm-hmm. displaying those of Rodney King and O.J. Simpson. Happy New Year, everybody. 2023. Um, 2023. Have a safe and happy New Year. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the time. Um, sorry you didn't get to see as many of our dogs this time. We're going to try to pull Olive back in next time for you. Um, but thank you for being here. And thank you. Thanks for jo- enjoying our, yeah. our show, liking us. We've got it up and running at the end of 22. And look, we're going to be there. And we'll, we'll be here bright and early, I guess, next week for you next Tuesday yes. to start off 2023 with, with a new topic. Perfect. So again, we are so happy you're joining us. We're on episode three. We're going to keep them going, but we would love to hear your final Mm -hmm. thoughts, um, things you found interesting, things you found confusing. Um, It it really means a lot to us to hear back from you and get some feedback. So, you know, follow, subscribe, like, drop a comment, and um, maybe you'll be on the next show. So yeah, thank you. And again, this podcast is brought to you by Tarani Law LLC, because you never need a lawyer. Till you do.